Today I'll be reviewing Corel Painter 2022. I'll demonstrate how I use some of the top new features in my workflow, and I'll share my overall opinion of the software. This is not a sponsored review, but I did receive Corel Painter for free, and I do earn revenue from affiliate links. As always, all opinions in this review are my own. If you're following along with me at home, my workspace is going to look a little different because I've customized it. Some of the icons you see are custom icons, so don't be alarmed if your workspace looks different than mine. If you'd like to download my workspace, you can get it on my website at aaronrutten.com. There's a link for that in the video description. Let's take a look at what I consider to be the top Painter 2022 features. Here in my workspace, I've created a new Dabs palette drawer, which has the new Captured Library, Apply Dab Profile Property, and Hardness Slider. Add to this the Dab Preview Panel, and this combination of controls lets me easily edit the shape of my dabs. The ability to change dabs on the fly makes it incredibly easy to randomize the shape of your brush. For example, whenever I'm painting foliage, I can simply change the dab shape to get different tree effects without having to switch between a bunch of different variants. If I wanted to make the trees look more distant, I can even soften the edges of the dab. Or I can easily paint a custom dab and then capture it right into the captured library without a lot of hassle. Managing dabs has never been easier with the new ability to sort and export dab libraries. And here's a hidden gem. You can even drag these dabs into a custom palette if you don't want the bulk of the entire captured dab library in your workspace. I have to admit, the feature that I use the most in Painter 2022 is one of the simplest. Pressing delete will now clear the contents of a layer. I use this all the time and I love it. It even works on multiple layers. One of the changes I have sort of a love-hate relationship with is the reorganizing and renaming of the brush categories and variants. While I do appreciate the logic behind the changes, it makes my life more difficult as a painter instructor. For example, I have loads of tutorials directing people to use the Diffuse Blur brush, but now it's called Blur Diffuser. Might that cause confusion? Perhaps for some? A few of the brush categories have also been renamed. You'll find there are a lot of brush names that are identical to each other and you're supposed to infer the differences from the brush category. This single change to the brush library is going to have the most impact on painter artists, and it's going to take the most adjusting to. Once you get past the unfamiliarity, hopefully you'll find it easier to locate the brushes. I do like that there are more brush categories. I think that makes it easier to find the brush you're looking for. The filters really help to narrow down the results. I also like the way the categories are grouped together. For example, the oils are all next to each other, as are the watercolors. The next feature I'm using often is the grayscale preview in the navigator. Because it's buried in the navigator options, I've made a shortcut button for it in my workspace. If you have an extra display, you may want to move the navigator onto it so you can get a larger view. This will give you a clearer representation of the contrast in your painting. While it's useful to view the navigator in grayscale, it's also nice to be able to apply a grayscale preview to your canvas as well. While you cannot do this in Painter, there are ways to achieve the effect with Windows 10 color filters or through your display or video card control panels on both Windows and Mac. Static bristle brushes have been updated to take advantage of rotation and squeeze. If you're using pin, tilt, or rotation, you can create strokes that are more dynamic. This adds a lot of randomization and character to this brush technology. Although static bristle is not my favorite brush simulation, I did stumble upon a combination of settings that produces a really nice pixel spray effect. I like this better than the default pixel spray brush because it doesn't spray out at an angle. I bet with some more experimentation, more types of effects can be achieved with static bristle, especially when combined with the enhanced cover method. It's fun to see an older brush technology learn new tricks. On a side note, check out my video where I test out a really old version of Painter 4 by emulating it. It's interesting to see how much of the older Painter content still exists in the modern version. Going back to teaching old brushes new tricks, the enhanced cover method allows you to modernize some of the old cover brushes. In addition to faster performance and more accurate color blending, you can also add anti-aliasing to the dabs. In my opinion, all of your legacy cover brushes should be converted to enhanced cover, unless you prefer the look of the older method. While we're on the topic of performance, Painter 2022 should feel faster overall when you're using enhanced cover brushes, as long as your GPU is able to experience the up to 75x boost. My NVIDIA GTX 1080 is able to get about 74 to 75x. When you're using Impasto on default and thick paint layers, you'll see a slight bump in performance too. 
If underpowered computer hardware is forcing you to work on smaller canvases, check out my video about upscaling with Adobe Super Resolution. Your mind will be blown. I actually started this painting of a mountain on a relatively small canvas, and then gradually enlarged it while adding in finer details. Another feature that I use is jitter reduction. This property adds stabilization to your strokes without adding as much lag as the stabilization property, formerly known as damping. I've used jitter reduction to create a smooth fill brush, which has some stability, but still feels loose enough to draw with accurately. Though I can draw with it, I mostly use this brush for its anti-aliased edge. I can modify the edge using the new hardness slider. This brush works well for blocking in flat colors that I will later add shading to. Next I'll show you a few layers features that I like. You can now Alt or Option click on a layer's visibility icon to isolate it from the other layers visually. Anyone who's ever struggled to find a layer in a complex composition will love this feature. Small repetitive actions can amount to a lot of time wasted, so I'm pleased that you can now lock, move, and convert multiple layers at once. The layer floating object, a remnant from an ancient version of Painter, has been replaced by the enhanced layer adjuster behavior. You can now move a selection, and the contents will move along with it. This is what you're used to if you work outside of Painter. Though at first I didn't think I'd find much use for it beyond image compositing, I found that color burn works especially well for glazing without muddying up colors, and color dodge gives some interesting lighting effects. These are welcome additions to the composite methods and merge modes. The final top feature in Painter 2022 that we'll look at is the ability to mix watercolor with other types of media. For example, I can paint with chalk on a watercolor layer and then wet it down to make it run with a watercolor brush. Just use a filter to find brushes that are compatible with watercolor. One of the best blenders for watercolor is the Just Add Water brush. Now you can use it to blend watercolor without having to convert the layer to default first. Watercolor has always been difficult for me to work with in Painter because of all of its limitations, so I'm excited to see some of those constraints were eliminated. And now for my conclusion. Overall, I'm happy with the changes to Painter 2022. This is another version that focuses heavily on making Painter easier to use by squashing legacy bugs and making the application more modern. There aren't any new revolutionary technologies to play with, as we saw with Thick Paint in Painter 2018, but the enhanced dab shaping and enhanced cover performance are able to unlock more of the potential of pre-existing brush technologies. A lot of attention has also gone into implementing feedback from the Painter community. Many of the changes in Painter 2022 are relatively minor, but their effects really add up to create a substantial impact. Needless to say, there's a lot of features I didn't mention that add even more value to this version. The cons are that many of you are going to have trouble making sense of all the changes to the brush library. This also affects me because it creates some inconsistency in my past lessons. Fortunately, I have a solution that suits both of our needs, and that is my Corel Painter 2022 training course. This in-depth course covers all the changes to Painter 2022 and then some. It's one of the best ways to master Corel Painter. I'll put a link to my course in the description of this video. Don't have Corel Painter 2022? You can save $100 off the full version with my coupon code PTRAR at checkout on painterartist.com. That brings us to the end of this review. If you're interested in short tutorials about how to use each of the new features, I've created a few of those for you over on Corel's Painter Tutorials channel. And for more free tutorials and resources for Corel Painter, be sure to subscribe to my channel and become a member. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.